Hi folks, I'm Manu Bhattadri and uh, I thank you all for participating in the Ata Galata Ask the Author contest. I really enjoyed the experience of uh, going through your questions and uh, telling myself the answers to those. Many of them made me think. And by the way you responded, I can see that you have enjoyed the contest as well. Uh, a big thank you to Ata Galata for uh, creating such a platform where uh, me and my readers could connect. Now, uh, let me tell you, uh, it's been a very difficult task for me uh, to choose just four uh, out of all those questions, because most of those questions, I think almost all of them were really intelligent and thought-provoking questions. Uh, but as per the rules of the game, I have uh, shortlisted four. Uh, I'll come to the one winner only finally. Uh, let me tell you, all four of them will get an Ata Galata t-shirt, uh, which I hope you'll proudly wear, because it will tell uh, those who look at you that you are the reading, thinking, questioning uh, sort of person. That's lovely. Uh, and for the one winner whose question I'll come to at the end, uh, gets one copy of my latest novel, uh, The Oracle of Karatukura. Uh, this is the book. I hope you find it as lovely as the cover is. Yeah. So let me uh, come to those questions that you've asked me. The first question is from Kartika VK. Kartika asks me, uh, Manu, interested in knowing about your relationship with Malayalam or your mother tongue versus the language you write in, which is English. Uh, found it interesting because uh, a lot of people uh, have told me, uh, have, there are people who have actually thought that I am an authority on Malayalam and uh, Kerala because of the way I write about that place. So, but uh, to be honest, I have been uh, outside Kerala most of my life so far. Uh, and I, I don't think in Malayalam, I think in English, uh, accent notwithstanding, uh, I think in English uh, actually, because I think because I was from when I was very young, I was in Bangalore and at school they used to, uh, I mean, we all used to speak in English. Uh, but that makes me uh, removed from Malayalam in a very, in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in an exciting manner, I would say. Malayalam is to be, to me, a little exotic since uh, it is a little away from my natural uh, consciousness. So uh, because of that, I find uh, certain usages in Malayalam very imaginative and uh, extremely exciting. Uh, so I, 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 uh, what I do is, I force my characters to speak the way a very rustic uh, Malayali would. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there is a phrase in Malayalam, means the snake that was curled up and resting on the fence, uh, someone has picked it up and wrapped it around his neck, which is basically quoting trouble, asking for trouble. So it's such a, that's what I mean. So I'm not, entirely comfortable with such, uh, they don't come to me naturally, but when I uh, venture out there, uh, it, uh, it, it uh, excites me and provokes my, uh, me to you know, kind of uh, think imaginatively. So I would say uh, the, the plot of my story uh, comes from my head, uh, but the language, the way I make my characters speak uh, in Malayalam first and then translate it to English uh, comes from my heart entirely. So that is the, uh, the, the relation between uh, my mother tongue and uh, the, the tongue in which I write. I hope Kartika, I have answered your question. Uh, thank you for asking it. The next question is from Hema Nair, who says, have you been misunderstood in your writing by readers? Uh, you're often tongue in cheek or sarcastic, and she goes on to put in brackets, in a very good way. Uh, but I feel sometimes that it may be too subtle the old age home was wondrously becoming a brothel. That's a quote from Savitri special room. The old age home was wondrously becoming a brothel. Uh, so yeah, it is uh, my privilege to be misunderstood. Uh, I think it is in fact uh, for any writer who writes open-ended uh, stories, stories that can be interpreted this way or that, stories with no definite uh, uh, moral or no one message. Uh, it really is a privilege to be interpreted in whole different ways, in ways that uh, that writer has not even dreamt of. So yes, I have been misunderstood. In fact, I think the basic uh, 
comparison of uh, Manu Bhattadri to R.K. Narayan is uh, a case to point. I don't think I am, I write at all like R.K. Narayan from what little I have read of the great man. Uh, I'm absolutely humbled by the comparison, but I think uh, from my locale, from the uh, characters, that is one primary uh, misunderstanding, uh, which I don't want to clear. Okay. Uh, so yes, so in many cases, I've been uh, told also uh, that, you know, did you intend this or uh, did you say this deliberately? Or did you make this character uh, this speak this way uh, purposely? Where you were, was this what you were hinting at? That has happened many a times. So, uh, in fact, there was one response about uh, this very quote uh, about uh, the brothel. The old age home was wondrously becoming a brothel. Uh, someone had told me, that's not R.K. Narayan at all. You've been compared with R.K. Narayan and this is not at all R.K. Narayan. He would never say this. Uh, I love such uh, reactions from uh, people. So yes, I have been misunderstood and uh, I like that very much too. It makes my stories feel as open-ended as I have intended them to be. Thank you, Hema, for asking it. The next question is from Srideep Chennamangalam, who in fact asks me two questions rolled into one. First, he says, what tool uh, do you use to capture the nuances of the plot and ensure that all bases are covered? And the second is, which is more difficult to write, short story or novel? What tool do I use to capture the nuances of my plot and uh, ensure that all bases are covered? I, I, I think what you mean is that all loose ends are tied up and finally it's one uh, holistic and uh, satisfying story, right? Yeah, I, I, uh, what I do is I just start writing first. I don't think about the plot entirely. I start writing, I think, character more than plot. So where the story is going to go, I myself will discover only later. I think of a character. I think of a situation. I combine the two. I try to put the character in, in a situation that is uh, awkward, funny, exciting, interesting, something. And then I wait to see what happens. Sometimes I have to hit the backspace uh, of my keyboard. Uh, that also happens, but uh, more often than not, uh, it develops into a beautiful story. And uh, the, the, you know, when you write like that, I find, uh, in my case at least, uh, the writing itself will help your uh, help you further the plot. So the the keyboard turns into piano keys, and then you know you make music, so to speak. Uh, and at this stage, maybe about one chapter or two chapters down the line, uh, I start working on the plot. Sometimes maybe uh, long, longer. I have been, say, almost halfway into a story and then I uh, work on the plot. And uh, that is when the tying up of loose ends will have to happen. So uh, a lot of things, the ending, everything I have to work on, which is the, uh, admittedly the less exciting of uh, the whole process. Uh, it's like uh, learning phonetics in uh, post-graduation. Everything else is novels and dramas and poetry and stuff, and you have this phonetics, which is, there's one paper, so you have to study it. It's like that. The Working on the plot is sometimes uh, less engaging to me personally than to just sit and write. But then uh, this is when that has to happen after, say, three or four uh, chapters down the line. I hope that answers one part of, the, of your question. The other was, uh, what do I find more uh, difficult to write? short story or novel? Well, uh, the novel definitely uh, has to go on longer. Uh, it takes a year, year and a half, two years. Uh, so the uh, attempt is a, a much bigger one. Just the, the very taking up of such a task is more challenging. Short stories, I often don't see short stories as a compilation or anything. I just write and then I see what can be put where. So uh, definitely short stories are easier for me, uh, but then they have, it's not like they don't have their own challenges. You have to quickly get to the point in a short story. You have to, if you're bringing a twist, you don't have much space for it. Your characters have to be well-defined in less uh, space in shorter time. So short stories have their challenges too, but in terms of effort, novel is certainly uh, the bigger one. Thank you, uh, Sridhi, for asking these two questions. And now for the winner of the contest, who's going to get not just a t-shirt to wear, but my book to read as well. Uh, Sid, you've asked a lovely question. What Sid asks is, have you 
ever written something funny or hilarious or mischievous while deep down completely broken or sad or lonely or empty? Manu, looking forward to your answer and also looking forward to read your book. Yeah, so uh, Sid, that's a very, very sensitive uh, question. I mean, yes, I have felt certain things that are very close to my heart while uh, maybe at the beginning of writing it, I've not intended it to go that close to myself. Uh, for instance, there is the character of Joby in uh, The Town That Laughed. Joby is a town drunk. So Joby was out and out a hil hilarious character to me. His, uh, you know, he lies in uh, ditches and uh, trenches and starts shouting obscenities. Uh, that kind of character. Uh, uh, a comedian all, all through. But towards the end, uh, in spite of me, Joby became uh, something else to me. And I, I formed a kind of attachment with the character, uh, Pygmalion style, I guess. Uh, and I felt really uh, uh, exactly how, how the way you, that you have described it. I felt close to him, especially uh, towards the end of his journey where being a drunk, uh, he's been running away from a lot of things all his life. And then one day uh, he steps out at night towards uh, night and then it starts raining and he gets drunk on rain. So he just opens his mouth up and uh, takes in all the rainwater and he actually starts to sway. Uh, it, it goes into his head. At that time, I did feel uh, really, I, I, I felt a lump in my throat. So I don't know uh, if this is because of any autobiographical element in my stories, in, in these characters, or because uh, I love human beings. I mean, I believe we are all we have. No God is going to come down ever and give us some clue as to what's happening. So we only have each other. Because of that love that I feel for human beings, maybe sometimes when I create a character, uh, though that character is intended to be funny, uh, sometimes he does make me feel warm, very warm. That was a lovely question. Thank you, Sid, for it. And congratulations, because you are the winner. Uh, thank you all for asking these questions, which made me think. And, and, and I have chosen the questions fin uh, 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 finally, uh, after considering all of the, uh, all the questions that were asked, based on how interesting and difficult they were, how thought-provoking they were, uh, uh, how, how much I had to really think in order to answer them honestly. I hope I have done uh, fine. I would say even the others whom I have not been able to uh, answer because of uh, the rules of this game, uh, please feel free if you wish uh, to message me your questions, I can always uh, answer them on Facebook or Instagram also. Uh, thank you Aleph Book Company for uh, publishing my books and thank you Ata Galata for uh, creating a, such an interesting platform where uh, I could connect with my readers. I think you're doing a great job bringing so many writers uh, to connect, getting so many writers to connect with their uh, readers. And thank you all, most of all, for uh, participating and for asking me really intelligent questions. Thank you very much.